As summer springs into action, a variety of wildflowers are beginning to rise into full bloom. I have been curious and excited to find more about these colourful wonders. Some I remember from my childhood, and new mysterious varieties that catch my eye. Today I'm visiting the beautiful Victoria Park, a 20 hectare park located in Glasgow, Scotland. The park was created and named for Queen Victoria's Jubilee in 1887. In order to identify these species of flowers that are growing in the local park, I have brought along the help of a field guide book, which surprisingly made identifying the plants right there and then even more exciting to discover. Yo! You know who it is? So we're currently in Victoria Park, Scotston, Glasgow, and it's a beautiful park. Like it looks like it's massive, and I'm ready to explore this park, boy. It's looking nice already. Oh uh, yeah. Let's get into it. So I got this book um, out because when I'm out in parts, as I mentioned, I like to try to forage and see what I can discover. So I'm not really an expert yet, so I tried to carry this book so it helps me to identify some of the flowers. And as I was walking, I could see that there's a lot of yellowy flowers um, because we're in summer right now. So a lot of yellowy flowers are blossoming in this wild, park of, wild part of the park. And I could notice that these little purpley blue flowers were there and I was like, right, what's that then? Uh, what's that down there? Even though it's really small, it just kind of stood out because there's like a lot of like yellowy flowers around this area. So this flower has four petals on it and the stem is quite hairy. So it has like a hairy kind of stem on it, um, which is often kind of reddish as well. Yeah, so this is called the uh, speed worm, and travellers used this, used, um, historically used it for good luck charm. So I'm going to take some of this since I'm in Glasgow and I'm travelling up here so I can be lucky. But yeah, you can actually, how can I even forget as well, this flower you can even use for herbal teas. Yeah, so you can dry out the leaves of the, um, not even leaves, sorry, the petals, and then have a herbal tea. So yeah, this is a good flower, boy. This one ask me which one's next. That one dares you could turn out of 10. That one dares you could turn out of 10. But she could never be my girlfriend. So, discovered this daisy, um, the daisy. So with daisies, they bring back childhood memories of like, in the garden like i used to pick them up and like give it to my friend or my mum and i've heard of other people as well within their childhoods making daisy chains which sounds quite cool actually and uh yeah they're also good for like pollen they're good pollinators as well and they grow vastly within your backyards or wherever you might may find them so they're okay with they're highly tolerant in fact of if you're to cut them or mow them because they grow back and abundantly so that's the daisy so the plant that i've found here is the red clover it's part of the clover family uh, clovers are good pollinators so bees are often attracted to this the red clover is actually not uh, found as commonly as the white clover. The white clover, um, if we get to see it, I'll speak a bit more about that one, but the white clover is a bit different to the red clover. For instance, um, clovers obviously typically have three leaflets and with the red clover you can kind of distinguish it by the light green kind of line that runs through it on this clover so that's how you can kind of distinguish that this is the red clover as well um the red clover is good for honey pollination honey pollination as i said 
um, but it's also good for women and if they get cramps like for instance in their menstrual cycle it can be um, use, useful when facing that so you can use it for like a tea and that's kind of a medicine medicine med med that one that word there uh, medical medicine yeah that's it it's used as a medicine there we go let's just say that it's actually also a remedy for like coughs asthma um, bronchitis is that the right word bronchitis like when your nose and stuff like it helps with that kind of even me right now it would probably help me in fact because it kind of helps with aiding that it's like an old remedy to kind of use red clovers for that type of medicine you know what yeah i got hay fever and i've been suffering it since i was young um and i actually only get hay fever in uk can you imagine like i've been places amazon even i don't even have no hay fever and no jungle and here i get it but what i'm actually trialing i'm going to trial is using nettles i feel that nettles will be the remedy that's gonna bring me on the right track and help me to get rid of it because with hay fever it's about pollen and nettles uh, can can kind of aid that and enable me to get rid of that that allergy like for instance because the bees are using that their pollen like even probably clover as well the bees are using that and if I am then to have like local honey as well, I've heard is quite good because the bees and stuff and the pollen is local. So it's, that's going to kind of aid that hay fever and kind of remove the allergies because you're then consuming it. So your body's getting used to it and it's saying, all right, I recognise this. You're not going to be doing, I true, I true, because your, your body's then saying, right, I know what this is. This is, this is that pollen. Yeah, it's the same pollen that's trying to get me down. It's the same pollen that I'm probably going to need to consume in a different type of way, obviously honey or using the nettles as a tea.